Aviruk, uh, is, is Kamala Harris likely to pursue the same policy of uh, Joe Biden on Ukraine and on China in your appreciation? Look, I'll just address the Trump question first and, and come to what you're asking. Firstly, if, if he really wants to be tough on China, Mr. Trump needs to stop printing his Bibles, the Trump Bibles in that country. Okay. Secondly, when we speak about inflation, one of the key factors that have contributed to runaway inflation for some time is not just the supply chain issues that you had after uh, uh, during COVID, but also tariffs. And Trump's policy seems to be to raise tariffs everywhere. Yes. Now, eventually, somebody is going to pay for those for those raised tariffs, and it's not going to be the countries that are being supposedly victimized or whatever you might call it. Just like Mexico did never paid for the wall, China is not going to pay for tariffs. It's the American consumer who will pay higher prices for everything. So this simple understanding needs to percolate through to anybody discussing economics in, uh, in the U.S. at the moment that tariffs, according to economists across the board, will be disastrous. They'll be to the tune of $4,000 a month, uh, a, a year, is what the middle class is going to suffer as a result of this policy. Now, okay. in terms of, in terms of the, the question that you originally asked, which was, you know, will, will they... See, every president will have a new uh, a framework to work with and like i said i think i'm underqualified to talk you know greatly on on sort of foreign policy matters however i will say this that biden and this is it's through his political career was always been a man of compromise and of trying to reach across the aisle he's done that in in, in a number of aspects of his career in politics Kamala Harris is is, uh, is perhaps not as predisposed to compromise as uh, Mr. Biden, so she will chart her own course. However, it will be a thought through, informed course. One may not okay. agree with her, but it will not be like let's send Jared Kushner to the Middle East and solve all its problems. And what he does when he looks at the Gaza Strip is he sees beachfront real estate. And I kid you not, that is exactly what he said. So there will okay. be a seriousness to the engagement in foreign policy affairs if we get a different administration than Trump's. Okay. Or, or will, will Biden's policies or Barack Obama's policies or Bill Clinton's policies, will they, uh, you know, uh, Professor Chilani, will they be uh, continued? Because, uh, you know, I had Ambassador Kaval Sibal on the broadcast with me and he said her relative inexperience would mean that a lot of people may be guiding her uh, and uh, perhaps uh, it'll be more, more than Biden. It'll be the Obama and the Clinton administration officials who will be calling the shots. You're right, Gaurav. She's an unknown commodity. She hasn't spoken up on foreign policy issues. She reads her speeches from the teleprompter. She's so beholden to the teleprompter that if she speaks without the teleprompter, she often uh, makes, uh, you know, makes it, make, you know, creates an embarrassment for herself. So being an unknown commodity, nobody knows how, how she will... Uh, perform as the president if she were to be elected, but it's clear from her own election campaign that she relied heavily on the Obama staff, the Obama campaign staff. And some people are saying that if she enters the White House, it will be Obama term four, you know, like this will be the fourth term of Barack Obama, yeah. because um, Biden, as his cognitive decline became increasingly apparent, seated. Um, decision making increasingly to members of his inner circle and that was one of the reasons why in the last couple of years the relations between the US and India came under strain because Biden wasn't in charge his inner circle especially people like Blinken uh, were um, were leading the charge and uh, Blinken uh, was using the human rights card against India and, and, and as you would recall that when um, 
Modi went in September to the U.S. to attend the Quad Summit. On the eve of his arrival in the U.S., the White House hosted Khalistan militants yes. and senior administration and intelligence officials to brief these Khalistanis. This was yes. quite a quite a move because it was quite a brazen move. They the Indians did not react to that, but uh, this is the, the one of the reasons why this relationship between the U.S. and India. Well, this was a blossoming relationship. Every president since Bill Clinton has yes. left the relationship with India in stronger shape than what he inherited. But Biden is leaving a damaged relationship to his successor to men, and it's largely because Biden's own memory issues resulted in him ceding decision-making to his inner circle. That's very unfortunate, but I think uh, whoever is elected will, will have to make it a priority to improve relations with India because if the U.S. wants to avoid strategic overreach, given the fact that it's facing escalating rivalry with Russia and with China, it needs India, especially if it wants to pivot to the Indo-Pacific it needs India more than ever. And therefore, it makes strategic sense for the U.S. to make this relationship with India robust. No, but do they want to make this relationship with India robust? That's the point I was coming to. If it's Kamala Harris, because of all that is happening, you know, whether it's it was quoting the Khalistanis before Prime Minister Narendra Modi's uh, state visit for the, uh, you know, visit to the United States of America or all these Khalistani allegations that have come up and the Khalistanis rearing their, uh, their heads uh, in the United States and in Canada. Is, is there a pattern to all of this? Is the United States trying to send out some kind of a message to India? Professor Chilani. It appears that um, in the twilight of the Biden administration, people in his inner circle have tried to leverage the Khalistan militancy against India. They have, uh, in fact, they set up Trudeau against India. Yes. They supplied uh, sketchy intelligence to Ottawa, which prompted Trudeau to make his allegation East India in September last year. And now Trudeau admits that he was relying not on hard evidence, but on raw intelligence when he made the allegation against India, triggering a downward spiral in Canada-India relations. So we have seen a sort of a pattern. For example, uh, look at this gentleman called Panon. He's yes. been allowed to make terrorist, terrorist threats against India from his base in New York with impunity. Imagine if India were to allow a U.S. designated terrorist to operate freely from Indian soil and make threats against American airlines repeatedly, how would the Americans react? Yep. And yet this guy has been, has been in, you know, in the vanguard to, to uh, ignite communal passions, even among the Indian diaspora in Canada and the U.S., for example, these two temple attacks in Canada last yes. weekend, one in, in Ontario, one in Lantern. British Columbia. Yes. Those two attacks were organized by Panun's group, the Sikhs for Justice, which is an India-designated terrorist group. So, so, you know, they're allowing these elements to operate freely from North America to embarrass India. And then we have these other things that have happened in, in, in recent months. We have had the U.S. involvement in regime change in Bangladesh, which is a very yes. major development. It, it appears to be designed to keep India uh, uh, boxed, in, Absolutely. boxed in, uh, you know, in, in, South, in South Asia. Uh, it's, it's a, 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 instead of, you know, instead of, um, uh, instead of creating a democratic transition in Bangladesh, uh, what has emerged is jihadist chaos in, in Bangladesh with far-reaching consequences beyond Bangladesh's borders, especially for India. Yeah. Uh, Aviruk and Lenka, Lenka White, let me bring you in. Uh, you know, you've been covering the White House, you've been covering the United States, and will, will Kamala Harris continue with these policies uh, of Joe Biden? Should she be elected? Is there anything to indicate that she may be different
A great question. I don't know if she knows if she's any different. You know, whenever you they were asking her how is she going to differ from Joe Biden, her first question was, well, I'm not a Joe Biden, you know, I'm not a man. And second question was, uh, second answer was usually, I will bring different experience because I have a different background than Joe Biden. But at no occasion she was actually able to answer how is she going to be different. And of course, even Democratic voters would like to see uh, Kamala Harris behaving differently because they also notice that the prices are higher. Then they don't want to continue uh, with Biden's style of economy. They would like to see changes. And also, of course, everyone noted that she didn't do great on immigration. There is a large yes. number of immigrants. So even even Democratic voters would like to see changes. Definitely. I, I personally think that most of the Democratic voters, they actually don't like Trump to that degree that they have to opt for Harris. Because genuinely, if you hear her speeches, she doesn't have that much to offer. A part of the fact that it's a woman, she she's presentable, she is calm, she's not having the rough statements like Trump, but that's about it. She doesn't okay. really have a good pitch. Okay.